YouTube. This week's tutorial will cover the Pages report in Adobe Reports and Analytics. And to get here, I'm already in the report, but to get here you go to Site Content and click on Pages to get to the Pages report. And then there's a number of things you can uh, work with the report on. The default here is to look at all of your pages uh, based on visits, but you can always change those metrics, but I'll get to that in a moment. Um, there are different ways to look at this report. You can look at it either ranked, which is the default, or trended. So I'll go ahead and look at the trended real quick. And here you can see I have it trended by week. Uh, and so you can kind of see um, the traffic patterns uh, week over week. You can change this um, so that it's by hour, day, etc. Um, I'll go ahead and change it by hour just so you can see the difference there. Um, so you can see that it's a little bit more chaotic. The um, more granular the time frame. Uh, you can also look at it by all days of the week or you can filter it to specific uh, day of the week uh, in that particular time frame. Um, right now defaulting to uh, visits and uh, data filter is none. And basically click on data filter it brings you down it brings you down here and you can do a search on the data filter which I'm not going to go uh, and do right now. I'm going to go back to ranked and uh, here you can also look at correlation filter. So you can actually take a look at uh, doing a correlation uh, with a particular, you know, with these pages um, and all sorts of different correlations and things. And I think I'll go into uh, correlation filters in a little bit more detail in another uh, tutorial, but this is how you get to uh, manipulate the correlation filters. So. Um, and then again, data filter down here, which is over here. And let's say I wanted to um, see everything that was uh, related to if I had, let's say, analytics in my um, title of my blog. Because these are all blog titles, uh, blog articles. And so you can see here, this is um, my top pages that include the word analytics. So some of them are blog articles, some of them are categories. Um, that kind of thing, and what traffic they got within the last 30 days. Alrighty, and I'm going to go ahead and to get rid of the data filter, you just click the X here, and it'll refresh it, and here's your raw data again. And then uh, you can also re compare to Report Suite. So if you wanted to compare this particular report, Pages Report, to another Report Suite, let's say um, I had this is my English language version of my blog, and I had a German version language of the blog, uh, for example, then I could do a comparison across those. Um, if you're comparing report suites and it's two completely different websites and things, um, it may not be as relevant um, as much as if you have um, the exact same website, but a different version of it, let's say in a different language, that kind of thing, and you're trying to compare it um, that way. Those are, um, I think, a little bit more insightful than trying to compare apples to oranges, um, for example. All right, so um, compare to segment. So if you're using segmentation, which that will be a completely different um, tutorial as well, uh, but you can do a compare to segment here. Uh, you can show your um, data. Uh, the percent is shown as a number or as a graph. And so right here, actually not, not in this graph, down here, uh, the percent is shown as a number, and I can click that and change it to show it as a graph. And so you can see here that the percentages are, are a graph, but if you mouse over them, you can see the number as well. Um, I'll go ahead and keep it as number, though. And do you want to include the current data, yes or no? So right now... Um, it was last updated 44 minutes ago. If I want uh, real-time data, I would click yes, and uh, it goes ahead and gives me real-time data. Not going to change very much for my website because my traffic isn't um, very high, uh, as you can see here. However, for a website that's getting hundreds of thousands of views a day, clicking it and going into current data, um, you would definitely you know, see changes in the data um, minute to minute, uh, perhaps, or at least hour to hour. All right, so now uh, one of the things you can also do is obviously you can add metrics. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And uh, beside, I'm gonna put this in the center so it's easier to see. So instead of just visits, we can also look at, I mean, you can see 
all these different metrics that can be added, including uh, this used to have to be a, a calculated metric as bounce rate, which is now a standard metric, uh, because people really wanted to know bounce rates. Um, now you can see the page level bounce rate, you still can't see a site-wide uh, bounce rate. Uh, that still has to be calculated, uh, and I will show that as a completely separate tutorial as well. All right, so I'm going to take a look at those, um, and then let's see what else would be interesting. So you can also see the uh, unique visitors and the page views and perhaps the exits. So uh, I, I won't crowd this too much. You could put everything in here if you wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to click OK. This makes the chart much more colorful, obviously. Um, and you can configure the graph. Uh, this actually has a number of different choices um, in terms of, um, right now it defaults to horizontal bar, but you can look at it in a number of different ways, including pie charts. So we'll just change that around just to make it so you can kind of see it. So uh, you can take a look at the visits, bounce rate. Uh, it only shows you the first three metrics in a pie chart. And so this is the breakout for the top five pages, uh, the breakout of visits, bounce rate, etc. All right, I'm going to go back to the default. And it says current data. So it's, it's giving us a warning here that certain reports, for the, so the, for these metrics, current data is not um, supported. So we just have to know that. And if we just click no, it'll just go back to so it's just not going to give us the uh, real-time data for, for, some, for some of these metrics. All right, so now we can take a look at, let's say, the, my top page, the page with the most visits, because I right now um, have it organized by visits. Uh, and you can see the bounce rate to that page. Yes, it's a high bounce rate, but keep in mind it's a blog article. People are Googling it, uh, clicking through and reading it, and then leaving the site. Um, they're there specifically to find out this information and really aren't interested in any other, other blog articles. It would be nice if they would be uh, interested in um, exploring my website, but, you know, I understand, you know, the way I read blog articles is I go in, I see an, a link to an article that's interesting, I click on it, I read it, I leave. Um, and that behavior is pretty typical for most blog uh, articles and things. So... And you can see that there's a, uh, you know, here's here's the number of bounces. So this is the bounce rate, number of bounces, and you can see compared to the number of visits, and the number of unique visitors, the number of page views, um, and the number of exits. And the page views would be, um, you know, if the if the bounce rate was 100%, like you can see here, uh, on this particular page. So I had 14 visits, um, 14 unique visitors and 12 bounces. So, you know, pretty much almost everyone, uh, I think it's like 99.9% .9 or something um, bounce rate. Um, and here is a nice one. For me, I actually, my bounce rate is zero and I have zero bounces. So, um, you know, uh, between all of these different pages, you know, and, and sometimes the bounce rate because of the way um, the metrics are being captured, um, you get the, um, the div zero error. Um, and that's just because uh, there actually probably was a bounce, but it's not, uh, it didn't get recorded correctly. And so you ended up with, with this error instead of a 0%. Uh, and that just kind of happens. And uh, you can always go ahead and add metrics, delete metrics, etc. Uh, let me just kind of uh, show you here. So you saw that I could um, drag and drop uh, any kind of metrics in here that I wanted to. If you want to, you can remove all of them or you can drag and drop them into the remove item. So that kind of gives you uh, an, an idea of how this kind of works. So you can kind of play around with that uh, in order to um, look at the metrics and the report the way you want them to. And then um, going back to the earlier tutorial about bookmarks, this is where, uh, you know, you customize the report the way you want to and then you bookmark it so that you don't have to customize it every single time you come back to look at the data. Uh, so once you get it to a specific area, you know, like you have the uh, metrics that you want, you have the graph laid out the way you want, 
um, etc. And then that's where um, bookmarking comes in handy. So I'm just kind of referring back to that earlier um, tutorial where I talked about how to do the bookmarks. But here's a perfect example of uh, why you'd want to bookmark a report. So the last thing I want to show you in the pages report is the breakdown um, or correlations. So you can see the uh, pages can be correlated with, so you can see um, different correlation options here. Or you can uh, break things down and all of the things that are available to be broken down, um, you can. So let's just take a look at uh, mobile device type, for example, for this first page. So this is for my top page, the page that gets the most visits, and the breakdown of um, pages by device type. So um, I get 1.5% are tablets and 98.5% and are other. Um, other would be anything that's not mobile. So uh, most people visit my site uh, via a computer of some kind and only one um, person visited through a tablet. So that's kind of uh, a neat feature here is just the amount of breakdowns you can do now uh, with these reports and things. And so you can even look at search um, traffic sources and we can take a look at uh, referring domains and what referring domains drove traffic to my homepage. So type bookmarked is uh, the top one. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that someone actually typed or bookmarked it. Um, there are other ways uh, to get to a web page uh, where Psycatalyst just can't um, recognize the method or, or where it came from. And so it's just any any kind of, of basically unknown or direct traffic to the site. Um, and then Google uh, is my top referring domain and then YouTube, so I'm getting a lot of search engine traffic. Um, Social Blade is um, a, a, another website that's driving some traffic to me. Uh, LinkedIn. Um, and you can see here the, the various other types of uh, traffic drivers to my website. So, so that's that's very good. It's the breakdowns and correlations, um, uh, customizing your metrics, customizing your graph, um, and getting this report uh, to give you a lot of insight on your specific pages and just seeing how your pages perform compared to each other. And if you have a specific goal of, I want my homepage to always get the most traffic, which obviously mine doesn't because this one is much more popular. Uh, you know, this page here is much more popular than the home page. Um, how do you do that? Do you uh, do marketing for the home page to try and drive more traffic? Do campaigns, etc. So uh, this kind of gives you the insights and then uh, you can take action from there. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you will like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Until next week, take care. Bye-bye.